Good morning. This is a vlog post from Able Cloud Advisors about two best practices with a lightning conversion for the salesforce.com platform. Uh, the first of which is something that used to happen automatically in Classic and doesn't in Lightning. Uh, nobody really calls it out, but if you have an account whose billing address changes, it used to float down to all the contacts automatically. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore, and that's kind of a good thing. Um, but you will have to build a process builder to facilitate that update to the contacts. The good thing about using the process builder is that you can dictate exactly what circumstances need to be met or criteria needs to be met for that new account address to float down. I made it so that when the account address changes in any way, the billing address, so there's billing and there's shipping, it's this only, well, it used to work in Classic for billing. Now in Process Builder, you could set it for either one of those two native address fields. If your billing address updates in any way and the contacts city matches that of the account, then I update the contact record accordingly with the city, state, obviously, uh, street, zip code, country. If my contact has a different city than the account, then I don't want that contact's address to be overwritten. You really need to know your data, know how your users are storing data, and understand that dynamic. Also, once you set up the process builder, it's always a best practice to turn on field history tracking on the contacts mailing address fields or whatever field your process builder is going to be updating. So my process builder, I originally built it thinking, okay, let me, the main object that's going to start the process builder is going to be the contact, but that didn't work because even though I built it so that the contact record would update when the parent account had a change in its address, Process Builder doesn't see that as a change. You're not creating the contact record and you're not changing the contact record, so the Process Builder doesn't get triggered. So instead, I flipped it and built the Process Builder to start on the account. And one of the beautiful things about Process Builder is it's more sophisticated than a general workflow, is that you can impact records tied to the object that started the process. So my account started the process, but I'm going to update the contacts tied to that account. And so that's a beautiful thing that we're able to do with Process Builder. So I just said, okay, when my account is um, created or edited, and by the way, uh, this advanced drop down here, most of us don't even know it's here, I left that unchecked to test, and that's one of the first things I'll go back and check if my test doesn't work. Um, so what's the criteria? I just said I used a formula and I said the account billing street changed. The action is it's going to update the account, all the contacts in that account if, and I put a criteria here, if the mailing city matches the account's billing city. And then the action is I'm pushing the account's billing address, all aspects, the street, city, state, down to that contact. Um, the other variable when you're building uh, a process builder, again, is this advanced dropdown that isn't intuitive when it's there, is do you want to execute the action only when a specified change is made to the record? And in this case, the the answer is yes. I only want this to trigger when the criteria I set, which is the billing street, changes in some way. Now, we're going to go look at this in action so you can see how it behaves. Know that 
Able Cloud has relabeled the native billing address field on the account to mailing. So I don't want you to be confused by that. So um, I have an account here. They're at 10551 Barclay Street. And I'm still setting up my lightning. That's what actually prompted me to find this. I'm going to change that to 10. 550, I know 550 is wrong, but I just want to show you how this works. I'm changing the street. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go look at my contacts. Now, one of the things, if you've already done your lightning conversion, you know that lightning only exposes four columns, which to me is rather annoying, and I don't know why I am limited when I'm moving to lightning. I ought to be given greater flexibility, but unfortunately that's not the case. Um, I believe that, and I got a view more, the CFO here, I know that he works out of the Overland Park. The city is the same. So now he has 10550 in his mailing address. Again, if you're not doing it, uh, I would highly recommend that in your related list that you are uh, tracking, and I don't know that I have this exposed just yet. I don't. Um, you are using field history tracking and tracking the contacts mailing address fields, ideally all of them. So if it's changed by a user or a process builder, you have that audit trail to see who did what when. What was the original value? What was the new value? All right. With that, thank you. Have a great day.